All right, boys and girls, we're going to do a stick it together activity today to see if we can come up with some better options. So these are all examples of how we can have this dialogue in our head so that when we feel that negative train coming down the tracks, we can redirect it into a more positive direction. So I want you to turn and talk to your partner and decide which one of these do you really connect with and why. Let's take about two minutes to do that. It really wasn't until I got into the classroom and saw the value of collaboration that the one who is doing the talking is doing the learning. And so if the children are discussing, oftentimes they're able to articulate a skill or a path to mastery that I haven't even thought of. And they do it in a kid-friendly way. And when they share that with one another, it can be very powerful. So when I had that aha moment, I thought, gosh, I need to find more ways with structure to put these opportunities in place in my classroom. Who would be willing to share which bubble they really connected with and why? Truman? I chose number one because sometimes I don't like what I'm telling myself, like when there's like a test that I'm struggling on, and I usually try to change that as hard as I could so I could feel positive, uh, positive because it's more pleasant to feel positive during a test than be negative about yourself. Very well said. Okay, gosh, you guys are phenomenal. So our big essential question for our growth mindset, stick it together, is what can you say instead of, is this good enough? Is it good enough just to get by? Or is it good enough because it's my very best? So there's two ways to look at that question, and I'll let you choose which way you want to look at it, okay? So your groups, and as always, you may sit anywhere in the room that you like, we have the Never Give Up group, we have the We Can Do It group, we have the Train Our Brain group, we have the We Like a Challenge group, and we have the Effort Equals Success group, okay? Let's have the Never Give it Up come on up and grab your sheet. If you need a pencil, you can find a space in the room where you're comfortable. Grouping students is a delicate balance of academic needs, personalities, where we are that day. And so I have to really think about who can work together well, who's gonna challenge and push and say, we need to bump up the rigor of that vocabulary and who's gonna sit back and say, mm -hmm, you guys do that. We need to make sure that we have folks that will say, well, what do you think? And you know, I'll just make a small recommendation. If you want to maybe underline a phrase or two on each post-it that you can use in your best answer, it's going to help make sure that you included something from everyone. Okay, so we all feel valued. Is that a strategy you think you can do? Okay, okay. I oftentimes ability group for the small reading group time because I need to be able to challenge students who are ready to move forward but then reteach skills that perhaps students didn't get. So sometimes in a lesson, they're in very different places. And so having those, uh, that ability group allows me to enrich and support depending on the group. And this one is their two beginnings. Everybody has a part in that. Random grouping is not always the most successful way to go. People tend to gravitate towards their best friends and that may not be academically the best choice because they're talking about sleepovers because right. they have that close personal relationship. And so it shifts from the academics to the personal and that can pull the whole group off task. So I like to be meaningful and mindful about my grouping. You can also tell yourself this is good because you always need to believe that you get the answer right. Okay, and what happens if you don't? Is it the end of the world? No. no. You can persevere you, next You can always again. say, mm -hmm. I'll work more hard next time and, yeah, but and oh, oh, maybe I'll get it. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are good because then it can, it can help you understand and learn from it. Mm -hmm. You should have that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Yeah. 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 See, talking it through, you guys came up with some really good stuff. Yeah. Do you guys feel like you're, con you're able to contribute well? Yes. Yes? Okay. Giving them time to reflect. How do I assess this? It's a wonderful way for them to learn to collaborate, but it takes a lot of time to set something like that up. They need to understand the expectations in the classroom. They have to know their roles. They have to be able to have positive conversations with one another. Let's start with Rex's. You could say, I'm going to keep trying. 
And you know, when you collaborate, sometimes you have to give in, and um, sometimes that's difficult for children in fourth grade. So that's a skill that we have to build to get to the beautiful thing that we had today, that gorgeous collaboration.